Yes, ma'am. This is a request for a conditional use permit uh, for a shelter for the homeless at 134 Harkrider Street. This is currently um, the Continental Motel. Uh, this is on 2.73 acres um, right off of Harkrider. Um, they, we looked at the traffic count and we expect there to be a uh, minimal impact in traffic with the homeless shelter in that area. Uh, current traffic counts is 5,500 um, average daily trips between Robbins Street, which is just west of the Hark Rider Street intersection, and 6,100 at Bruce Street. Uh, utilities are present at the site, and any expansion of utilities would need to be through Conway Corp. Uh, we did look at this. The applicant intends to open a homeless ch shelter, which in any zoning requires a conditional use permit approval. Uh, the comprehensive plan designates this area as a commercial zone. Um, the applicant plans to operate the center 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, due to care of some of the residents. There will be a case management administration office where the office is now. Uh, that'll be open nine to five, Monday through Friday. And um, there's a manufactured home in the rear of the property. It will need to be removed. What the applicant has requested is um, a manufactured home attached to a foundation uh, to be erected as a manager caregiver home in the rear. Uh, which um, staff would be okay with. Uh, we've looked at everything and we would recommend approval um, based on the conditions and you can read through the conditions or I can read them to you, but there's a lot. I'm gonna say I think we are okay unless anybody else on the commission needs those read. But I, I assume everybody's looked at their packet prior to arrival, so. Any questions? We might bring you back up, but you're good for right now. Is the applicant here to speak in favor of this request? Come on down, name and address for the record, please. Hey, um, I'm Spring Hunter. I'm at 225 East Robinson Conway. Um, I mostly just wanted to bring up the subject that I know that talking about sheltering the homeless anywhere in Conway is a difficult subject. Um, I know there's always concerns about property values and what is adjacent to the property. Um, but this really is a conversation that we need to have. Um, and I know um, you guys have been provided with our program operational um, uh, manual um, that we've provided, um, and we're happy to answer any questions about that. But one thing that I did want to um, just remind the Planning Commission is that the city has a really solid plan for sheltering over on Gum Street single adults um, in the adult shelter over there. But currently, there is not a solid plan for sheltering families with children. And um, during our homeless count last year and um, working with the Faulkner County Public Schools, in the fourth quarter of this past school year in the spring, we counted 843 homeless children that were registered to school districts in Faulkner County. And so this is a very real issue. Nationwide, about 40% of the homeless population lives in a family unit. Um, and is not a part of like single male, single um, female dormitory style housing. And so this is just something that we really need to have a solid plan for. Um, the Ministry Center um, <coughs> specifically has been sheltering and working with the city's homeless population for over nine years now. We have been studying this subject. We've gone to other cities. We've learned from them. We have modeled our program working with Nashville and Memphis and Oklahoma City We've really done our research on how to take care of families with children really well. We think that we will add value to that part of town um, just by being there and offering really quality programming. So we're happy to answer any of your questions. I don't really have a whole lot to add. Um, we plan to use the property much as it's been used for the last 50 years. Um, we just have a different population that we're taking care of. Are there any questions for the applicant this evening? I am going to ask you to hang out in the batter's box, if sure. you don't mind. <laughs> if someone has a better, you know, example for me to use, I'm glad to take feedback on this, but this is, this is what I got right now. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Come on down. Hi, my name is Anita Grody. My address is 12 McNulty Drive in Bigelow, but I work here in Conway, and so... I'm part of this community. I wanted to speak in favor of this um, from the standpoint that the rehousing that happens really often a high percentage with uh, the people that the ministry center serves whenever they were doing the warming station 
uh, this past winter. They were working with families and putting those families on a plan to have permanent housing. And I know that that's a part of their plans with the population that will be using this uh, location also is that they'll be working case management to get on their feet permanently. And so I wanted to add that in as a part of the benefit to our community is that you're uh, not only housing people for a temporary amount of time, but that they're putting those families in a process and a program in order to get them on their feet permanently. And so I just wanted to speak to the benefit, even just to that piece uh, for our community. Thank you for those comments. Are there any questions? You're good. Okay, thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor of this request? Come on down, Junior. I won't speak in favor of it just because I agree with the, the goals of the uh, intent of what they're trying to do here. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. Any questions? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of this request? Good evening, if you'll just state your name and address for the record. Marsha Patel, 130 Hark Rider. I'm speaking on behalf of my father, Nitish Patel. He's the owner of John Kush LLC, Care of Budget Inn, right next to the property of Interest Continental Inn. Uh, firstly, I want to say this is a great deed that the Conway Ministry is doing for the community. However, we have some concerns and questions regarding the project filed by them because of the nature of the project and the direct impact it would have on its surrounding area and community. Budget Hen currently is a residential property for my parents, my 90-year-old grandparents and myself, along with the commercial property serving the community by renting rooms to families, individuals for a night, week, months, or even years. Um, the reason why the project concerns us because we speak from a family experience back in San Francisco, California, where the neighbors sold their uh, hotel to their city shelter the homeless, and within a few months, the place became a shelter for uh, drug addicts, sex offenders, caused nuisance, vandalized our family's property next door, so they had to sell their property at a low cost to protect their family. Um, and this is why we are concerned of possible trespassing and damage to our property in the future. We understand the document uh, mentions that they will not serve sex offenders or anyone with recent, I repeat, recent violent criminal history but this sentence alone reflects a lot of gray areas. If for any uh, reason the, sound, uh, the council approves this project, we want assurance that being in such close proximity due to the shelter home uh, being planned, the ministry will strictly abide by the criteria they mentioned to the document, uh, so we will not have to encounter the circumstances like our family did in California. Um, Safety is definitely a concern uh, given the nature of the project considered uh, next to us, uh, especially we're a residential and a commercial place. Um, we're concerned about the operation affecting the value of our property directly, sheltering homeless at the next uh, location next to us, uh, possibly depreciates the value of our land and property of the whole neighborhood, including ours, uh, again, if the new operation is not handled strictly. I would like to end by asking uh, one last question to the Conway Ministry. Changing, uh, is, Con is Continental Inn going to be solely a shelter home or is it going to operate as a motel as well? For example, they have 22 rooms in their location right now. If for a day there's 15 rooms given to homeless and so there are seven that are vacant, are those seven going to be rented for commercial use or it is strictly only homeless shelter? Um, Considering uh, Continental Inn is being bought by nonprofit organization, if this gets approved, we request anything Conway Ministry is buying from current LLC at 134 Hark Rider have special zoning, meaning the property only be used for shelter home and not a commercial property, so it doesn't affect our business, and also only house members who meet the criteria as they mention in their document. If nothing else is considered, and I'm sorry I'm being too forward with this, Based on the discussion I personally had with uh, Ms. Spring Hunter, uh, who had mentioned she would be considering buying budget in in the near future, I would say I would request the council to hold off on the project until it's feasible for the Conway Ministry to purchase both properties at the same time to come up with a solution that best serves all the parties so my family does not possibly have to go through what my other family in California did. Lastly, we didn't have the intentions to come up to the council and object such a noble cause. 
uh, Conway Ministries planning, but we had no choice but to put the livelihood of our family and business as a priority. I humbly request the council members to consider all the points I have mentioned or even come to negotiation terms that best serves all parties involved. Thank you for taking the time to hear me out. I really hope for the best outcome for all parties involved. Thank you. We appreciate those comments. Can you hang there for just one moment? Are there any questions for her this evening? I, have one, I, th I, I think have we one. may need you to count. I think we, there may be a few questions. Yeah. I just have one question. I know that you guys are right next to this property that's being purchased. And um, that area has several nonprofits that serve the homeless in our community. And I know oftentimes they rent rooms when they're trying to process people into their programming. Do you know if any of those nonprofits have ever rented rooms from your family for homeless people? Could you mention a few names of the location, maybe? If I mean, I can't give names of people who have rented. So the reason we discontinued it is because of how much chaos there was. There, there was particular organization that we used to rent rooms to, but we had to discontinue it because of how much trouble there was. I have one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I read your letter, or whoever from the family submitted the letter, and I, I was thankful when we got our packet because some of your concerns, I feel like, they did address about, you know, sex offenders. It will only be families. And I, I, I understand and I can feel your emotion, you know, that this is your family business. But it does sound like there is an opportunity um, for that in the future to maybe you know, be a win-win for everyone. But I do know, you know, our city has struggled with this. And I know in the past, homeless, you know, p individuals depended on both of those locations for maybe a night for someone to pay for them or to have a place. So um, I think with it being families and with these specific things, I understand your concerns about making sure they stay in the guidelines. Right, and that's why I mentioned, like, running, I'm not, like, obviously I am opposed to it. But I'm also saying if it's run strictly, right. we're not, like, I'm not negating it. We're also, I'm also suggesting, if, since this is a discussion I personally had with Ms. Spring Hunter myself, you're considering it buying our property in the near future, you might well as consider buying both of them at the same time to avoid any of our concerns. I, I understand your point, and I would imagine, I'm not going to speak for her, but I would say the need is immediate right now, and waiting just is keeping families from having right. housing in our city is the way I would look at that. So, but I appreciate it and thank you for your letter. It was. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Thank you so much for your comments. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition? Okay. Hang there for just a second. I'm going to go ahead and bring this into commission. Um, we do have folks if there are questions that we can address, but commissioners, I will open this up for discussion in commission. Well, I'm curious if there's a timeline on if this gets approved, what's the ministry center's timeline for moving forward? I think that you may need to answer that one. Well, the list of staff recommendations is long. Um, and so um, the timeline that we're on um, contractually, our closing date is November 15th, so we actually couldn't physically do anything with the property at all. Um, we are looking at installing fencing. We're looking at going into each unit and um, giving each unit like a kitchenette. Like there's a pretty major process that would have to happen. Um, we feel like at this point, extremely hopeful. Um, if I'm being honest, our 10th anniversary is April 28th of 2024, and I would love to be ready to launch something. But that's part of the reason that we kept um, the design of the property very, very similar to the 22 units that it is. We're really not trying to do a whole lot of site development other than to put up um, really great fencing. We want security, coded security interests and surveillance cameras, but really to the units to themselves and the layout of the property, we're not doing a lot of modification there um, other than safety modification. Um, and I, when you're ready, I'll address some of her concerns. But some of her concerns about the people on the outside of our shelter, we are also very concerned about the people on the inside of our shelter. So 
We are equally concerned that we have really great fencing and security surveillance and coded entries and the, only the people that belong there are there and only the people that are allowed to be inside and registered to the program are actually supposed to be on the property. And we will have 24 hour surveillance, but we'll also have staffing that is there 24 hours as well. So April 28th, that's, a, that's the goal. Sorry, Thank that's you. a long answer. That's <laughs> all right. Thank you. Any other discussion in the commission? I had a question. I think there was a question uh, in the comments earlier about if there will be any commercial use at the same time. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, no. If they're empty, they're empty. Um, I don't think they will be. But um, we are not trying to figure out how to do like a hybrid model of that. We're, we're good at what we're good at, and we're not trying to run a motel. I have a quick question for you. I know you've ran variations of this model and several nonprofits work together this winter, kind of across the spectrum for homelessness. Um, I've heard you mention several times about how much safer it is if you could actually do something like this versus it being rented commercially. Could you speak to that? I just you being able to control that process easier than just renting hotel rooms to put people in to, to run this program. Yeah, so what she's talking about, um, this past winter, we worked with the Toad Tech Homeless Coalition and really a lot of other players outside of that with the Faulkner County Sheriff's Department and the Police Department and hospitals and DHS and anybody else that wanted to, a seat at that table. How can we take care of our homeless population? Um, so we did a hotel hotline where we partnered with um, five or six different organizations to provide hotel rooms, but specifically for families with children. If you're potty training a three-year-old, you can't be reliant on whether or not it's going to be below freezing tonight in order to know if you have a place to lay your head. And so the Ministry Center rented 10 of those um, studio hotel rooms that are at the Eagle Suites. So those are set up like kitchenettes. Um, we leased those for four months, and we sheltered 29 families in that time. And um, the ability to um, land a family somewhere for two weeks or 30 days, our, our family that stayed the longest um, stayed uh, 53 days. Um, and so um, them being able to stay there and then really engage in intensive case management so that they could move on to permanent housing was just an incredible benefit. Um, and that's kind of what I alluded to before. Like we went to other cities to study their models for family housing, and that's kind of how we drafted our family shelter model. Um, and um, we, we were hopeful going into the winter. You know, we've made this our business to study the subject for a long time. And um, so this kind of served as a test pilot for a future shelter. And so um, during the time that the 29 families were there, 85% of the people that stayed with us moved on to permanent housing. They did engage meaningfully in the case management process. They did the things that we asked them to do. And the vast majority of them were wildly successful um, my biggest complaint about operating that program out of like leased studio apartments was that I didn't own the property. I couldn't fence it in. I couldn't have coded entry and control of who could come and go on the property. But that model operating out of that space was wonderful. I just needed to protect the people. Um, so that really kind of opened our eyes to owning a hotel ourselves or a motel. Good question. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Any other discussion, commissioners? There you go. Um, so this is a very noble cause, and it, it is something that needs to be done across the country. And um, but sadly, how noble of a cause it is, it would attract more people around the area, and. If you're on Hark Rider Street right there, right down the road is St. Joseph Middle School. I went to school there. Before it was fenced in, we had a problem one time with a homeless person wandering onto the playground. Teachers had to get us off there. Even though it is built for families, it won't just be families that hang around it. it, it it's very, very bad of how this happens, but with these... how how this would be set up, it would just attract homeless people, not just families, but, you know, people with addictions. And right there on Hark Rider Street, 
it's a very fast road. I, speed limit's 50, 45. That's not good for the drivers. That's not safe for the drivers. Train tracks right there, that's not safe for anyone. And with the how the city is trying to plan the old uh, airport out there and the school right there and a little bit further down Hark Rider Street, there's a gym. My parents go there. They've had break-ins in their cars and stuff, and that not necessarily is just pointed towards homeless people, but just anyone who may be wondering about. So I just feel that this location may, may not be the best for this use. Um, and the fact that it's only going to be 22 units, uh, I would like to see something that maybe could be a little bit more units to help more families. But um, just with the surrounding area, I don't believe that this is the best use of that. Thank you for sharing your perspective, Jensen. Are there any other comments or discussion items related to the zoning request? I have a comment Go based ahead. on his statement. Um, this is already an area where homeless are being served within a less than a quarter of a mile by three different nonprofits. Um, with a plethora of programming, they try not to overlap. There's already a men's homeless um, transitional housing there. There's already the homeless hub right there where they're serving the homeless every day. And then you have CAPCA that does um, rapid rehousing programming. So this is already where our homeless persons in our community are staying and are getting services. Um, and this hotel in particular, I believe, has worked with several nonprofits in putting homeless persons up overnight until they can get into housing. So this, where this is going is not a stretch of the imagination. Um, it's, it's actually going right in the middle of where our homeless people are already are. Yeah, so I understand that, but what I'm trying to point out is that this just kind of seems to be building in the wrong direction for where that is. It, if you look behind Hark Rider Street, there's a place called Chateau Village. It's a mobile home park in between Hark Rider and the Industrial Park. It's actually called Oakwood, not Chateau. It, it's what it oh, okay, used to be. okay. Let's. I think. I think you both have made major point. Are, are there comments related to the zoning that we need to discuss from a commission standpoint? I, I appreciate the perspective. Go ahead. Again, I'd like to hear from staff on their reason for supporting, just to reiterate why y'all are behind it and what other options you may have looked at. I'll let staff maybe. Yeah, I think a lot of the reasons that they've brought up, um, there's already a population in that area that's underserved. Um, this would allow them a place to stay. I think it provides additional security that um, you wouldn't have if they just, you know, rented somebody a room for mm -hmm. a month. This has um, security on site. You're going to have fencing. You're going to have cameras. Um, so I think this takes a lot of the security concern that you would see um, if it was just a hotel that was being rented. Um, based on the location, I think it's, it's a good place to house people, honestly. That's a good question. And I think you mentioned some other programmatic things that are in that. Area kind of already being housed there. This is just actually going to add a complete layer of security mm -hmm. that's not there currently. Any other comments from the commission? I'm, I'm ready to make a motion. Whenever you like. Go ahead. Uh, first, I just want to commend the work you guys are doing and say that this is very needed and this is something the cities need to reckon with for a while. And so I wholeheartedly support this. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve. Seconded. I have a motion from Drew, a second from Alexander to accept. The recommendation from staff to approve the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Let the record show that it passes unanimously.